Yo, how's it going everyone? So we're doing a PC build today. I have all the parts laid out on the table right here. By the way, massive shout out to Antec for sponsoring today's video and sending over their Antec DF600 Flux PC case, which we're gonna be building in today. This, believe it or not, is actually a very inexpensive case, but when you pair it with an RTX 3080 and everything I'm, I'm gonna be doing to it today, it should turn out looking really good. So let's take a look at the actual specs that we're dealing with on the table right here. Shout out to MSI for sending this thing over. This is their Gaming X Trio model. Here we have an RGB LED strip on the side actually, and there's gonna be some RGB lighting up where it says MSI and GeForce. This RTX 3080 is not playing around and I, I can show you exactly where these three eight pins will go, but yeah, th this thing is power hungry as hell. It's ready, it's ready for anything. So three eight pins right there. And for the power supply, this is actually a Seasonic Focus Plus gold power supply right there. Uh, Antec did send over a power supply for this PC build, but I did actually upgrade to an 850 watt Seasonic power supply. Just to be on the safe side, Antec actually sent over a 650 watt, which I'm not entirely sure if 650 watts is all right for this. It probably is, but I wanted to be on the safe side. I went for an 850 watt power supply there for this PC build. And we're of course pairing that graphics card with none other than the AMD 3600 XT. I would absolutely be using the new 5000 series AMD CPUs in this PC build if I could, but at the time of making this video, you can't buy them, they've just been announced. They do look good, I wish I could use it in this build, but they're not quite available yet, so we're using what we have, and what I have is a 3600 XT that I've already tested, I've already done all the overclocking on this thing, I know what it's capable of. I know for a fact that I can push this CPU right here, this 3600 XT, to 4.5 gigahertz all core, and it is 100% stable. I've been running this CPU as like my video editing CPU. This is my main CPU that I'm using in my own personal rig. And believe it or not, even six cores is actually handling most workloads really well. Besides that, we have RAM right here. This is 16 gigs from Gile or Gile. I'm not really sure how to pronounce their company name, but they sent over some RAM for us and it is actually optimized for Ryzen. So that's cool. But the cast latency is CL18 and then the rest are like 20, 20, 20, 40, but still decent RAM and it will look absolutely stunning in this PC build. This of course is the Evo X RAM. The motherboard that we're gonna be using today is the ROG Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard, but bear in mind, this is an X470 board, not X570. The reason I've chosen to do this is because I don't have a low end X570 board. The only one I have is the godlike one from MSI and I just don't feel like using that board for this CPU. I could, and I will in a future PC build, but for this build, I did want to use the X470 board. This board and this CPU work absolutely fine together. All you need to do in order to get this CPU to work on X470 is make sure you have the latest BIOS version installed on this board, which I have, so this CPU will genuinely run absolutely perfect on this board. Even though it's not X570, it's still gonna run really well. You're gonna see in the benchmarks and in a future video, I'm gonna be building in the newly released Razer Tomahawk PC case, which is sitting right here. We're gonna be building an X570 PC build using the same CPU and you'll get to see whether or not there is any performance uplift in that PC build. For today though, I am gonna be sticking to X470 as I know for a fact that this CPU and this motherboard work really well together and I've already installed everything so there's not much work to do. For the storage that we're gonna be using in this PC build, this motherboard luckily does support two M.2 drives. We have an M.2 drive right here. This is a one terabyte model. Shout out to XPG for sending this thing over and we even have another one terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. This is once again from XPG. However, this is their RGB. M.2 drive, super simple to install these, no cables, nothing. Just plug and play and you have storage, brilliant. Taking a look at the cable management, in this PC case right here, I've gone ahead and Velcro cable tied a bunch of the cables together. We have our RGB hub right here for the deep cool fans that I'm using and this all plugs in to this hub right here. Now, what this PC case did really well and what really impressed me is that this actually came, this like really budget PC case, believe it or not, came with a fan hub and an RGB hub. Now, I really like their idea of their RGB hub and the way they've implemented into this PC case, it's really cool. 
uh, we have an LED button right here, which you might think like, oh, no one's gonna even use this thing because you're just gonna control all your RGB via motherboard software. But believe it or not, this actually syncs up to the free pin five volt ARGB header really well. So you can go ahead and press and hold this. And instead of like using preset LED lighting effects that you can access by just pressing it, I'll show you all this in a second, like once this thing is actually turned on, but this button is actually useful and allows you to quickly change LED lighting effects throughout the entire PC case. It's really good. I'll be sure to cover the RGB of this PC once it's actually built, but essentially this hub has a bunch of three pin five volt ARGB headers over here. And what you can do is basically take all of these and plug all of this into one motherboard ARGB header. In the end, you're gonna get very good RGB control straight from the top of your PC case. It's, it's genuinely good. They did a really good job of it. Let's do the PC build because you pretty much know what we're dealing with here. For the cooler, by the way, in case you're wondering, this is a Castle 360 EX RGB. Very good cooler. I like the look of it and the fans. Yeah, with all that said, we are gonna be vertically mounting the GPU in this PC case. It should turn out looking good. So let's begin the build. If you wanna go ahead and speed up your PC building experience, I'd recommend investing in one of these electric screwdrivers. They're really good. I've absolutely not regretted buying mine. I used to use a normal screwdriver from iFixit for many years, but upgrading to an electric one, oh my Lord, this is worth every penny. It's, it saved me so many hours already. Like genuinely, this has saved me so much time. As I already have thermal paste applied on the CPU, a lot of CPU coolers as well do come with thermal paste pre-applied. Once you've mounted the liquid cooler onto your CPU, you're also gonna need these four screws to of course tighten the liquid cooler down. This liquid cooler in particular can be customized as well. So I've gone ahead and added my own tech block logo in the center there, which is something you can do as well. We can go ahead and install our RAM next, which is super easy. You're just gonna line everything up. You're gonna press down on one side, press down on the other side. That's one dim installed. This liquid cooler came with two extra cables that come out from the actual cooler itself right here. And one is to power the pump, which we're gonna plug into the top of the motherboard all the way up here. And then this cable right here, I'm just gonna route through the top of the case right there and out the back. The cable that came out the back right here, I'm gonna plug into this thing, which is actually like an RGB controller. This right here is basically just like a hub for the RGB fans. And each fan has two cables, one to power the fan and actually make it spin. And the other cable plugs into the hub right here. And that's what I've gone ahead and done. I've plugged in all the RGB of all these fans into this hub. And then we have a fan hub right beside this RGB hub, which actually powers all the fans. And this fan hub has one cable coming out of it, which is a four pin PWM fan cable that we're gonna be plugging into our motherboard to make all the fans spin, of course. But that's pretty much a quick rundown of how the fans are set up and how everything's kind of plugged in together. So RGB hub, fan hub, and then another RGB hub. These RGB hubs, I think, can support six fans per hub, but I have a total of seven, hence why I'm using two hubs. I've gone ahead and mounted the RTX 3080 onto the vertical GPU mount, and we're gonna go ahead and plug everything in. Right, I've gone ahead and routed the three eight pin cables through the bottom here, because there is a little cutout for cable management. That, my friends, is a wrap. That's the PC build all done. And now, the moment of truth. Will it actually boot up? And will everything... Uh-oh. I think there's a cable touching one of my fans, which isn't good, hold up. You don't want to hear that noise. All right. Um, is, that, is that sorted now? Let me just hit F1. There we go. We've made it into BIOS. It is a success. So earlier in the video, I talked about this PC case having this LED button on top. Now let me show you what these lighting effects are. Now it is somewhat limited in, in the sense of it's only controlling the three pin five volt ARGB devices you've plugged into the hub that I showed you at the back earlier. That means your graphics card, your RAM won't be syncing up and your motherboard won't be either. But your three pin ARGB devices at least are gonna be syncing up, which includes all of the fans and the liquid cooler and an LED I put beneath the graphics card to pretty much give the card like underglow lighting, I suppose, but 
That's completely unnecessary. I'm, I, I just put that there for extra bling, extra looks. If you just press the LED button, we're gonna cycle through tons and tons of RGB lighting effects. They're gonna be different colors, different animations. And if you go ahead and press and hold the LED button, it's gonna blink. And once it blinks, you let go and it's gonna go back to the settings set by your motherboard for the three pin ARGB effects for all devices that I've plugged into the header there. So you don't have to buy addressable RGB splitter cables anymore if you buy this PC case, because it's gonna come with an entire hub to power all your addressable RGB devices that can be controlled normally via software. And you can also just go ahead and like quickly change lighting effects to anything you want just by the click of a button on top of your PC case, because sometimes that is easier than going into software and modifying everything, especially if you just want like a quick static effect and then you can just go back to your RGB rainbow mode whenever you want by just pressing and holding the button. This is a good feature. I really hope more PC cases follow along and actually include an ARGB splitter hub, especially with how common ARGB devices are becoming in PC builds. Right, we are currently in Battlefield 5 at the moment and we have the FPS up here as well. So I've got the game fully maxed out. I've even got ray tracing turned on at the moment and we're on 1440p. I've got the CPU overclocked, of course, to 4.5 gigahertz across all six cores and the RTX 3080. I've also put an overclock on, nothing major though. I've put a 60 megahertz increase on the core clock and a 600 megahertz increase on the memory clock. So nothing crazy in terms of the overclock right here. We're averaging at about 120 FPS so far on this map right here. Now this is the outpost game mode on Battlefield 5. So we do have about 64 players in this server. It's madness, yeah, 32 versus 32. We are fully packed here. So yeah, this is kind of like worst case scenario for... Oh, you guys see that dude? Headshot all the way from there. Yeah, like I said, we averaged around 95 to 100 FPS with ray tracing turned on on 1440p. That is quite a bit of an improvement over the previous result I got benchmarking Battlefield 5, where I was running an RTX 2080 Super and an AMD 3950X that was running at about 4.1 to 4.2 gigahertz on all the cores. The game definitely felt much more playable and much more smooth on this card than it did on the 2080 Super that I was using before, which averaged out at about 70 FPS on the same settings, basically. And if you're wondering how we're able to achieve only 40 degrees Celsius on the GPU, well, it is vertically mounted, so that might be helping out with the temperatures and I've set the fan speed to 100%. That's why we're able to hit 40 degrees Celsius right now, whilst in Battlefield 5, with all the settings cranked up. Thank you so much for watching. As always, all the PC parts for this PC build are linked down below in the video description. You can build a similar PC if you want. Shout out to Antec for sponsoring today's video. Shout out to MSI, Deepcool, Geel, or Gile, XPG for sending over the parts for this PC build. I really appreciate it. We're gonna be sending the RTX 3080 back, but not before. We build one more PC build using that graphics card, but in the Razer Tomahawk PC case. That is the next PC build we're doing. Stay tuned for that one. That's gonna be going live in a couple days. So until then, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.